uh, Cortex A9 processor inside. So the processing power is similar to Galaxy S3. All right, let's, let's get out of the stratosphere for a minute. Let's yeah. bring it down to Earth for the people who uh, are just consumers, and let's lay it out for them. You tell us what this device will do for them, the new Google Chromecast. So, I mean, for 50% for, uh, of the users is going to be, no, no, for more than that, let's say 90% of the people who are going to buy this is just going to make it the easiest way to get your videos on a TV. And this is not, uh, this is not watching TV. This is watching internet video. So this is about video on demand. This is about watching this live hangout we're doing on your TV. This is about watching all the YouTube videos on your TV and all the Netflix and all the videos from the web on your TV and this is going to be the easiest way for 90% of people to do that and people are not going to use AirPlay anymore. They're not going to use, uh, well, you can still connect with MHL, you can connect your phone to a TV if you want and uh, so, it's, but, the, I mean, this is like, uh, it's just making it easier to to to, and it's actually huge because video on demand is. Uh, I have a theory that YouTube is within two or three years is going to be Google's number one source of revenue. All right, just before we get too far along here, I'm just going to interrupt you again. You threw out a couple of geek terms there that some I know what they mean: the MHL and the AirPlay. But there's a lot of people here may not even know, have a clue as to what those are. So you, if you could uh, let people know what you are talking about and put those terms into perspective, if you wouldn't mind. So MHL is uh, like an HDMI output from your phone, but it's coming from a micro USB, and uh, it's full bitrate. So you're getting gigantic amount of data from your phone to the TV. So you get full HD video, uh, no lag, and you can even play very high frame rate video games on your TV. AirPlay is using the Wi-Fi in your home to stream, to compress the data from your phone or from your tablet to the, t to the TV. It has to be Apple devices only, but you can actually do AirPlay from Android too, but, uh, or you can even use Android too, but that's just like not really official. And then there's a Miracast, which is what Android is mostly using, and which is included on all Android 4.2 devices and above. And that's also using Wi-Fi to do, basically, there's some kind of smart thing going on in your phone or in your tablet that compresses what's on the screen and sends it over Wi-Fi. But Wi-Fi is not very, you know, it's very slow, kind of, uh, bandwidth. All right, let's, let, I'm going to stop you right there. You say Wi-Fi is slow. Now, this, does this device only use Wi-Fi? It won't use Ethernet. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, the Chrome... Cast is using Wi-Fi. It might, I think, it probably supports Ethernet if you have a micro USB to Ethernet adapter. But that's, of course, not confirmed at all, and it might not be true. But I think it's quite possible that it could support Ethernet. But you don't really need it. But the the the, the trick here is that now, we're not trying. Wait a minute! You just contradicted yourself. You say you don't really need it. But then a little while ago, you said that uh, Wi-Fi was too slow. Now, let's, let's reconcile this for the yeah. audience here. So it's too slow if you want to, like, walk around with your phone at home and try to stream from your phone, which is a battery-powered device, to, uh, let's say, uh, something like a, a Chromecast a device directly without going through um, a hotspot at home. You know, a battery-powered device is Wi-Fi. Not, it's not as powerful as, let's say, huge laptops Wi-Fi or like a router at home uh, or like um, uh, this Chromecast, which is powered by MHL, for example, I think. All right, got to stop you there because some people think that you're uh, getting ready to call Roto-Router. I don't know what that means. And, and it's router in, in router. American speak. In, you know, us Americans, we call it the router. And, and, and you English people call it the router. So just so we know what you're talking about. So so now to simplify it, now to correct me if I'm wrong, what you're doing is you're sitting there with your, uh, I've got a, like I've got this Samsung here, this, uh, yeah. this Samsung phone, and I can take and pull up the, uh, 
YouTube interface, which is easy to do, and, th and then it's going to show a little symbol in there that, that uh, if I touch that, it's going to connect it to my TV, but it's not going to go from this Samsung to the TV. It's going to go from the Samsung up to the cloud, up there in the cloud, and then from the cloud, it's going to come down. Of course, the cloud isn't really up there. It's out there in a data center somewhere. And now, is that correct? Or yeah, you, exactly. Can you, just, can you describe that a little better than I just did? So if you would do that with an iPhone on AirPlay, you might get 360p resolution to your AirPlay device because it has to stream from your iPhone directly to the AirPlay receiver. Uh, over Wi-Fi at home. Well, if you trigger the stream to the Chromecast, it's going to stream the 1080p directly from YouTube server, and it's, it's like uh, it's like the difference between HD TV and the old non-HD TV. It's uh, it's much better to do it directly from the cloud to uh, like a device like the Chromecast. So that's why it's it's really great. I mean, it's it's really going to be for many people. It's going to be like a not just easier, but also impressively high quality. And it's going to be, I think, is this is good enough for a majority of the public to start using internet video instead of normal TV. And this is why this is quite quite important. Because now, Nick, they, Nick, they got an open API on this thing too, right? That means, like you and me, we could start a little company and we could, we could develop an app that ran on this. It would make us a million bucks, right? Yeah, I think I think those uh, those API and SDK that they announce actually uh, are going to enable people to kind of let's say you have a game and you want people to play that game on a TV and you might be able to use that SDK somehow to run that game on the Chrome stick on the Chrome sorry I said Chrome stick that's how I called it in the last like six or, t or twelve months but it's a Chromecast device so because it could run the game on the Chrome on that Chromecast. So you don't have to run it from your from your portable device, or you could also stream that from your portable device directly. I don't know if there's Wi-Fi direct support, or if has, if it has to go through your router at home, or if it had, has to come from the cloud. I mean, there, there might be a whole bunch of cloud games now. That's basically gonna you just launch them from your phone, and it's gonna stream the game from the cloud to your TV. Now, will and, we be able to stream Hangouts to our TV using this technology? I, I would like to hope so. I mean, you, 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 it, I maybe what Google is doing is just launching the first device out of many, and there might be one with a, like a built-in HD webcam uh, that you just put in your TV, so you can have HD Hangouts uh, easily from your TV. Or this one hopefully could support a USB webcam because it has a little micro USB port. Right. I, I can see that on the picture. And, and that's possibly a USB host. I mean, all the HDMI sticks that are on the market have USB host. So I'm pretty sure this is an HDMI stick, and I'm pretty sure it has a USB host, but maybe Google is blocking it for some reason. I don't know. But I don't think they are. And there's a possibility they, they sell, like, for, uh, let's say, $39 or no, they're not. They don't call nine. I really like the price is $35. That's, like, the first time people are, like, Reasonable with pricing, but uh, they no, could sell bought, enough. I just bought four of them right before they shut down sales. That's cool. Yeah, when are you getting them? I don't know, but I got in before they shut it down, so That's I didn't awesome. get the message that said it's out of stock. I got I, my order went through because I did it immediately as soon as they announced it, or as uh, so soon I'm as in, they opened the site. Anyway, I'm in London, so what you should do is uh, add a category in your website where you can resell them. I'm joking. Maybe not. You don't need to. No, them. we're just we wouldn't do anything like that, would we now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can sell them for thirty seven dollars and make a profit. Right. Yeah. No, I so I, so I, the HDMI I, stick I, is really I, fascinating. I, Have you seen the HDMI sticks before? Uh I've seen them, but you might have some examples there. And, so I have uh, and so, I have like twenty HDMI sticks. You have but twenty of I, those. Yeah, but I don't have them. I don't think I have them right here because okay. I'm in London right now and all my stuff is not in this country. Well, what's uh, the best? Uh, what's the best competing product that's out there right now to compete with the? Uh, I can't imagine anything competing with this, but if you had to name something, what would it be? So, 
just to talk, I'm sorry if I talk too much, but just to talk a little bit, like uh, in the beginning of 2012, like around March 2012, uh, the introduction of the A10 base that was an old winner, which is a Chinese ARM processor based on a Cortex A8 was released, and that's the A10 based HDMI sticks, and those were leading the market for most of 2012. Uh, and then since uh, the, towards the end of 2012, there was a dual core rock chip, which is a 3066 processor, which is also an ARM processor from China. Uh, that was leading most of the sales and still leading most of the sales of HDMI sticks. Actually, these HDMI sticks have been selling tens of millions of units uh, out of China uh, since they got released. So it's already big. You know, uh, before there was only tablets that people would talk about and the if I, I go to I go to Shenzhen like nearly every month like which is uh, where they manufacture everything and uh, they sell many of these and now the leader I think is uh, the quad core rock chip platform so now it's a uh, quad core Cortex A9 and the thing is out of China you don't really have brands so much it's a whole bunch of anonymous small factories and and then they get brands once you sell them in the USA or right. you sell them in right. uh, in Europe then they at the end maybe they put some brands but maybe they don't even put brands on them you so, think there'll, there'll be a market for clones of these you think they'll clone these and sell clones like they sold uh, clones of the PC when the PC first came out this go way back in history so those let's say I would estimate 50 million HDMI sticks have been sold so far. I think most of them, they're all running Android right now, which is not very useful kind of on the TV because Android is for a touchscreen device. Right. And so this, I think, I expect this to be open source like Android and that all the HDMI stick makers can just take the software now and ship Chromecasts. And not well, only Google is going to sell them. I mean, Google doesn't need to sell them. They just yeah, want to main. put it out there. Yeah, they just want their content to get out to more places, don't they? Yeah, they just want to show. That's kind of like a reference design. It's kind of like a reference stick. And uh, so I think you will have all the Chinese makers making these. And maybe you might have a dual boot. So if you hold the power button in for like, I don't know, five seconds, you could boot into Android instead of Chromecast. Oh, but wow. if you just push it normally, or something like that. You just have Chromecast as a default. That's what yeah. I expect. I your, expect your Google name is Chrome OS and Android. Your name is Nicholas Charbonnet, spelled C H A R B O N N I E R. Now, are you a Frenchman or what nationality are you? Yeah, I'm uh, half Swiss. Half so, Swiss and half French. Yeah, I've been going to all the consumer electronics shows since 2004, making lots of videos. And my uh, my YouTube is uh, uh, slash Sharbax. So my YouTube name is C H A R B A X, and you can see C H A R B A X Sharbax. Okay. I have all these videos from China. You can see there. And if you go on my website armdevices.net, you Let can click on HDMI. I can, I can actually share that here. So if you go on armdevices.net. You can click on HDMI stick category on the side, and you'll see all the HDMI stick that ever got released, basically. Now, this is you, Nicholas yeah. Charbonnet. This is when I visited the Google uh, headquarters, and I, I actually sneaked into the to the Android building, even though it's locked. You know, you're not supposed to get in. Uh, somebody was getting out. I just walked in, and I played their video games that they have in there. But that was just for a few minutes. And you're, uh, you're actually really focused on this, because you're writing about... Moto X, and you're writing about um, more about Moto X, and uh, yeah, because and about that the, all this kind of stuff. But the the Moto X is also very interesting. They have uh, basically uh, Google is working with uh, with Qualcomm. There might be a Qualcomm processor in the Chromecast. I don't know, but I don't think so. But they're working with Qualcomm on the Moto X uh, eight, the X eight processor, which is a new ARM processor that Google has kind of customized for their whole bunch of uh, the sensors which is very interesting topic and it's gonna like it's gonna be a big topic of discussion for all these smartphones and tablets in two, uh, the second half of this year and it's gonna be awesome basically uh, no more power button you just take your smartphone and, and it's on because this the sensors inside are so low power they can detect what you do like for for a whole year on the battery 
So it's just on basically all the time now, and ultra low power. So if you go on my uh, on my website armdevices.net, you can I'm see there are the profiles. Load. I'm waiting for it to load. It's okay. slow loading. Now. It's uh, loading here. So it just says loading. So I'm guessing that Google has a rock chip processor in there, and if if it's true, then it'd be cool because I'm just guessing, but. Uh, and before uh, before the Google I/O, I was posting on my website that I hope that Google would release a, a Chrome stick. That's what I would I would call them before Chrome stick, because yeah. uh, the Chrome stick, I mean basically the Chromecast is going to kill the PC, which is a pretty big deal. Like the desktop computer is dead now. This is replacing the desktop computer. Not quite yet, because Google markets it as only for streaming, but uh, the hardware is there and. Potentially, this is like a. There has been a dream for many, many years of people using thin clients, where you just have a very basic a home computer where you access everything on the cloud. And this is this is kind of it. You know, you could connect this to a, a PC monitor at home and uh, and connect a keyboard and mouse. It could be a wireless. If there, I don't think there's Bluetooth inside, but there is a micro USB, which I think is host, so you could. Uh, Connect like a USB hub and have a mouse and keyboard for five dollars more. So for forty dollars, oh. you have a home desktop, just added screen, which is your HDTV, for example. Still waiting to load here. Armdevices.net. Yeah. Yeah. Armdevices.net. That's what I get. There it is. Maybe it's because there's so many people watching this. They're all going on my website at the same time. That could be. So on the right there, you can see HDMI stick. Yeah, and uh, how many how many uh, videos are there? Uh, H. Where does it say? Uh, towards the right, right there, uh, the fifth. Oh, HDMI sticks, fifty-five. It says categories, yeah. fifty-five. Yeah. So so far, I only have fifty-five videos about it, but uh, it's uh, it's. Well, this is a super informative website, and I highly recommend that people who want to learn about this. The subject of arm, arm devices and these US HDMI sticks, they go here to armdevices.net. Uh, and it's so, got a picture of you how you video blog there. It looks like you've got a heavy duty video rig, head mounted yeah. uh, wearable computer, and the whole yeah. deal. So, uh, that's I amazing. actually showed the uh, Google Glass to uh, Sergey Brin uh, like six months before they announced Google Glass. I was at CES and I had the. Uh, Copin, which is a, a, a micro display maker, they borrowed me a device and I walked around and there was Sergey Brin. He was like, whoa, what is that? What are you wearing? And then he tried my, my Google Glass for like 20 minutes. And wow. uh, I, I, I knew there was some kind of rumors on the internet. I was sure that they were working on it. And the four Google guys together with Sergey Brin, they're all the Google, the Google Glass team, like uh, the... And they were all walk. They were just walking around CES, looking what's new, and by random, they just walked. But uh, they saw me at the Samsung booth. I was, I was working around with this augmented uh, reality system, so I could uh, I could watch a live chat uh, while people can see a live hangout the whole day while I walk around the the trade shows. It doesn't really work because there's too much interference at the trade shows. So do you have Google Glass yet? I don't have Google Glass yet because I'm I'm European and I don't think they let any Europeans have it. Did they? Oh, okay, got you, got you. And it's too expensive. So now let's let's get imaginative here. Let's let your imagination run wild. And why don't you throw out some ideas for developers on what they could do with this product? What do you, what could be some imaginative ways that this could be used? So, what I think is going to completely destroy TV and you have to consider that TV advertising is today much bigger than internet advertising so this is a huge deal for Google like TV advertising is trillions and trillions of dollars every year so what I think is gonna destroy old-fashioned TV is when people just sit back in the sofa and you just have a big green button on your smartphone and a big red button so if something's cool playing on your TV, for example, this Hangout, which is awesome probably, then you push the green button. You let people know that it's good. It's like a plus one. 
it's a signal and then the next video should be automatic I don't think people want to choose a video I think they just want to get automatic recommendations and just sit back in the sofa and kind of be lazy which is what most people are when they watch TV but uh, like some kind of augmented laziness so think about uh, well this is kind of like an application I guess in a web service and all that kind of stuff but you could build that on top of YouTube because YouTube has all the videos so maybe I'm I'm saying too much I want to build this myself but I don't know how to do any programming that's too bad but you you you're the hardware guy and you've got the ideas and you've got the imagination to come up with some uh, some very cool apps I'm sure don't you uh, Nicholas yeah uh, I would like to think so but I guess uh, that's how uh, uh, I mean, uh, well, Bill Gates he was he was uh, programming a little bit, but not so much. I mean, uh, mostly it's uh, you know the other people that that do all that that kind of stuff. And Steve Jobs, if you look at Steve Jobs, he, I don't think he could program. But uh, I, 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 but the Google founders, they're they're the only like real uh, te technical like bosses at Silicon Valley, uh, as far as I can think of. Are there any like uh, CEOs that are programmers? Not sure, but uh, I don't know why I'm talking about this. But, uh, but there's lots of other things you could do. But I, I guess it's mostly about this little Chromecast icon and how to place it inside the application. And I guess it's yeah. not complicated. But I don't know how to, yeah, how to do it. A lot of little Chromecast feature. So that, uh, say, when you're using the app, you could mirror the the app on your big TV. Would you think there'll be a lot of apps mirrored on the TV? Yeah, uh, pretty much any application can be done can be uh, mirrored to the TV. But what is also interesting about this is, you know, the guy in in charge of Chrome is the same guy as that's in charge of Android. And what I think this also means is that the Chromecast is not just running Chrome OS. I think it's also kind of running Android applications. Uh, so what I, 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 I'm guessing here, but I'm thinking that if you have a really cool game, Android game, it sh of course it has to be able to run on the Chromecast device. So that means the Android application has to run on the Chromecast device. And I'm I, I'm pretty sure that's happening. So that basically means that Chromebooks and Chromeboxes, and also the Chrome browser might pretty soon get Android app support also. So basically, it's the whole idea of merging everything. I, I think this is merging everything. So I don't think Google is talking about it yet, but uh, you could imagine that every Android game is going to work through the Chromecast, and every uh, application that could make sense to have on your TV also should be able to just run locally on the little HDMI stick because you don't really want to stream it over Wi-Fi it's not as good as running it locally or running it from the cloud would you say this is a true breakthrough in the terms of being a real game changer for the uh, for the uh, the people who are trying to cut the cord from cable and get it on to the set top box era but it's funny because the guy in charge of the Chrome, the Chromecast, uh, the guy on stage is the same guy that was uh, showing off the Google TV two years ago. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I could recognize him. It's the same guy, right? And uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So I don't know if it's fair to say that Google TV was a failure. Kind of. I guess you could say that. I because. Uh, it it was especially a failure because of Intel. That's my theory. Because everything you do with Intel is never going to work. I mean, maybe uh, I shouldn't say that, but I mean, it, there was Chromebooks before the Samsung Chromebook last year in October, and they were not very popular. There were slight, like, kind of like small things. But as soon as the Google used ARM uh, in that Chromebook, basically, it's the biggest selling laptop in the USA. Uh, especially in Amazon.com, since it got released, every single day is number one best-selling laptop. What the Pixel and, or the Chromebook? Uh, the Samsung Chromebook from last year, the one for two hundred forty-nine dollars. Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, now 
this is also an ARM powered device, and uh, I think this is a, this is the shift that Google needs to do. And and everybody that's making set top boxes is moving to making these sticks, HDMI sticks, which is yeah. amazing. It's like uh, if you look inside the, the 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 board, you have all the electronics and the tiny. I mean, it's just really amazing, and the price, the cost is so amazingly low. I mean. There are some HDMI sticks below twenty dollars also in Ch over Ch over in, in China. Uh, I even did a video last week uh, where I showed an Americast dongle that might be eight dollars or ten dollars. Who is uh, who's, who in China is making these things for Google? Do you know? So I wouldn't know exactly which factory, but I think the processor is a Chinese ARM processor, the Rockchip three one eight eight. I'm I'm just guessing here. But I think that probably makes sense because uh, it's the like the design of that SOC system on chip is probably easiest for Google to use in a mass mass production because I think they're probably making millions right now of these because they know they're gonna sell them. I mean it's so cheap, so I hope so because it's possible that Google doesn't even care to sell that many and this is just gonna be out of stock. Uh, it, Google has done that before, you know, like. Uh, the Nexus 4, it's, it was out of stock all the time. And it's because LG didn't like selling it so cheap. $299, it's too right. cheap. And, go, and LG was not making enough profit, so it was always out of stock. Well, and that, even the, uh, that new uh, Nexus uh, 7 that they released today is a pretty sweet uh, price point for 269 for a Wi-Fi version, and it's got a full high def uh, screen and everything that's pretty awesome that's a pretty pretty big breakthrough it's, it's of course it's absolutely amazing it's awesome that screen is probably a, a fantastic i look forward to seeing it but uh, even the nexus 7 last year asus i think i'm pretty sure it was being careful at making sure that the cheaper model is always out of stock and they only have the more expensive one right. with more memory because they make like twenty or thirty dollar extra profit on the more expensive one, they might even make more than thirty dollar extra profit because well, the, a, the one for two sixty nine that's right in the middle. The first, yeah. the first thing is less memory than more memory and Wi Fi, and then they jump to LTE. I think it's like three fifty yeah. or something like that. Yeah, but because Asus uh, has been kind of struggling with tablets before, and they got like Google convinced them to like basically. Go mass market and lower price. And I, seven inch is my favorite uh, tablet size. I've been using seven inch tablets since 2006. Right. right. Because uh, maybe not in some countries like uh, in the USA where it's too hot, but uh, in Europe and uh, in the uh, northern part of the USA, I guess, uh, you wear a jacket like half of the year, I guess, when you go outside because it's not too warm. And so it's perfect to have seven inch tablet because you can take it in a jacket and it's you just have it you don't need a bag. You just take it everywhere with you. Yeah, I might even be able to get it in my uh, photographer's vest here. It'd be a stretch, but I might no, I'd have to have a bigger pocket than that. I'd have to get a different photo vest. Yeah, but that's why I, I think seven you, inch let me perfect. Stop you, let me stop you here for a second and ask you uh, when you're not uh, writing about uh, these uh, arm chips and all that, what do you do for a day job? What's your regular job? Or do you have a job? Are you independently wealthy? I'm, I'm just trying to, like, uh, somebody's joining? No. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to, what's it called, uh, uh, since 2004, just uh, have Google advertising on my YouTube videos. Oh, you want you want to you can answer the call if you want. No, that's okay. We want to continue with the show. Uh, here. So I, I'm I'm not wealthy, but I'm able to travel to these conferences, which is pretty awesome. But uh, uh, I mean, there's some American bloggers like uh, you know, if you go on The Verge and and Gadget and all these sites, they make millions of dollars. So you know, it's possible to make to blog and make enough money to live on, kind of live on, you know. But right. Uh, so I I mean, that's basically what I'm doing. I have these YouTube ads and uh, and a little bit more ads a little bit around my website and sometimes some some uh, conference organizer or some some companies invite me to different conferences then I don't have to pay for the airplane that's basically it 
So your your day job is you work for yourself then? Yeah. And, and is that profitable enough for you? Well, I'm not totally bankrupt, but I'm always near bankruptcy. But I mean, that's that's how it is. I guess. Uh, yeah, it, I guess uh, Google could uh, with this Chromecast. Maybe I can make more money soon because uh, Google really needs to ramp up advertising revenue and monetization on YouTube because they're already doing a good job, but they can do so much more. Imagine if I do a video about a device and people can just click from their phone why do they watch it on the TV to buy it you know one click like the, I make a video about uh, let's say an HDMI stick or no let's say a tablet or something that's available on Amazon or something Google should automatically know it's available and while you watch the video uh, it pops up on your phone and says do you want to buy it and people should say yes and when they say yes I should get 4% commission and if Google did that I would automatically get Maybe ten times more money for my 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 job, which is to post videos on the internet, and so that's just a, to to show an example of how much already YouTube is huge, and it's just uh, YouTube alone is the biggest website in the world, like in bandwidth, by far. It's like uh, there were some articles recently that Google is twenty five percent of the bandwidth on the internet, but I think it's possible that Google is even more than that, and. Uh, most of that is YouTube, it's not Google. This call, but I'm going to let you keep talking, okay? Don't okay, please talk. take it. Just keep talk to the, the audience, and you can take this wherever you want while I take this call, okay? Yeah, th and that's, that's what's amazing about Google is that all this bandwidth, I, it's possible that nobody's watching this, but hopefully somebody's going to watch it and uh, are watching it right now. But what's amazing is that Google is providing all this bandwidth for free. And you have to think of all the storage, all the hard drives, and all the cables, and all the power, and the servers that are running 24 hours, and not just in one place, because you need to have servers all around the world for this to work. So it's quite amazing, but I guess it's just mathematics, and Google is able to, and Google is the only one who's able to do this. So when you try to think about alternatives to YouTube, there's like Vimeo, but Vimeo is maybe 0.001% of YouTube in terms of bandwidth. And uh, this is the French uh, Daily Motion, but it might be 0.3% or 0.1% of, of YouTube bandwidth. Netflix is pretty big, but that's also, it's just clever, clever American business people like buying bandwidth and selling it to a whole bunch of subscribers, which is pretty impressive. But... I mean, there's nobody like YouTube able. You can just upload tens of gigabytes of videos to YouTube, and it's free, and it's just completely insanely amazing. Like uh, all this storage, all this bandwidth for free. So, of course, it's it's wonderful that Google is doing it, but uh, they need to they need to get to the next level. I Absolutely. would like to I would Absolutely. like to give them money. I would like to give content makers money why is it not possible to click on your YouTube account and give you money it should Absolutely. be included like uh, Google should make it possible to people for people to support content creators like uh, it should be a default feature right there yeah absolutely I agree with you I'm a content producer myself and uh, there has to be a way to make it worthwhile then there'll be greater and greater content won't there yeah, I'm a fan of this this guy, uh, 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 Joe Hanson, his name is, and he has a YouTube channel. Uh, the YouTube channel is called, uh, I, f I forgot what it's called, but uh, he's really funny, and he did a, a, this like kind of like a Kickstarter, the, the competitor, I forgot the name, Indiegogo, yeah, and he Indiegogo, did an Indiegogo yeah. to collect $5,000 so he could travel to Sweden and Finland to make a few videos, and people like donated, like, he, he doesn't have huge audience, but he has a big enough audience, so he just asks his viewers to give him money, and he, they do, and then he can travel wherever he wants. I mean, this is the first time he did that, but I think it's a great example of how you should just have, if you just have a few hundred s followers, it should be already enough for you to do, like, a, basically, they could buy a, a equipment that you would need, or uh, travel that you need, or... Uh, pay for your food so you can concentrate on making a better video instead of having a real job, you know? And uh, 
this is kind of this is this is a very strange future we can we get into, but this is so uh, Chromecast will change everything. Maybe Chromecast will make uh, new models of monetization possible. It'll it'll be a whole new uh, arena for the a app developers with the API for the uh, iOS and the API for Android. And uh, I think we're entering into a, a very interesting uh, time with for not only uh, developers but for people who want to enjoy content on a wider uh, scale now, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, imagine watching YouTube video streaming and Netflix without advertising on your TV at all, but you could have advertising on your phone right. or on your tablet. Right. Because there is space right here, and you don't care if there's relevant advertising. And basically, I think this is where Google is going to pop up some ads on your phone while you watch the videos. And, and what's good about that is that you can just click on the ad. You can buy you can you can uh, you might if you want, if you click on uh, if it's a video ad you might click it if you agree it's going to interrupt your video for a second and sh show you uh, like the advertiser's video or something like that and you can then resume back to your video uh, it's just going to be uh, it's, it's also going to be very interesting to see how families and friends and stuff can kind of like collaborate on choosing what to watch uh, I had a very interesting ex experience with my father uh, a couple months ago where we watched videos for 12 hours the whole night uh, just streaming from YouTube like we watched jazz video and uh, uh, Woody Allen interviews and a whole bunch of and he was really he thought it was cool and and uh, but it, the trick is because all videos are already on YouTube kind of and there is good stuff for everybody on YouTube already the trick is how to get it there without having to search too much or you know you, we need like the recommendations engines I think are gonna be kind of a trick and I hope I really hope that Google has them like uh, just just about to be ready they already probably have some but to have some perfect recommendations engines for this for the Chromecast great this is a trick great and getting the right audience to this video because uh, you know, it's not. I don't like the idea that people have to subscribe to you before you get an audience. If a video is good enough, you should get the audience automatically. And Google needs to figure out how to do that. And that's a uh, also on Google Plus. It, it shouldn't matter how many people circle you. It should just be about how good your content is. And Google can figure that out. Not just analyzing your content, but analyzing the 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 ratings, like the plus ones people do. As soon as Google really start to use the plus ones for something, then Google Plus is going to happen. Right now, it's a little random what's going on here. Uh, and uh, it's it's really by random. I saw your Hangout also, for example, you know? And uh, yeah, random is cool, but uh, it would be nice if it was... You just knew that when you sat down by your Chromecast, that you are know that you're going to be entertained every single time. And if you are in the mood for music, you can kind of switch over to music mode. And if you want news, you can switch over to news mode. If you want technology videos, you can switch over to that. And you can have different... If you want comedy, you switch over to that. And you might watch the comedians you like, and you might, if you want to watch some you don't like, then you just say, Google, show me stuff that I don't know, you know? And they will be able to show you stuff that you don't know. Well, That's speaking of uh, random events, we've got uh, Brad Chasenor here from uh, the Tech Webcast at, at techwebcast.info. And Brad uh, is uh, quite the TiVo maven and uh, expert on a lot of media things. And uh, Brad, I'll just ask you if, you if you have any questions for Nicholas today or if you have any comments on this new... Uh, Chromecast that just came out. Well, well, I am getting one. Jennifer is getting one for me. I live over in Australia. I can't order one over here at the moment, but I am getting one from the US. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I love it. I reckon it's a great device, and it's going to work great with my phone and stuff. And I hope it's going to work on the iPad too. Is that correct, Nicholas? Yeah, it works everywhere. It'll work everywhere. Good stuff. Good stuff. I can't wait to use it, mate, especially Netflix. I use Netflix over here as well. I use a VPN, so that's a good way to airplay stuff from that to the uh, to the Chrome Thing to the Chromecast. 
Yeah, I think it took everyone by surprise. It may not have taken you by surprise, Nicholas, but I think it took a lot of people by surprise today. I think you probably saw it coming, didn't you? I, I kind of I hoped for it, but I had I, I was surprised too because I was just expecting a, a Chromebook. I thought maybe you would you would get an upgrade for the Samsung Chromebook already, but uh, I guess that's coming also, but not yet. That's going to be maybe a Samsung event or something else, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I was I was uh, anticipating the Chrome OS on a stick and Chrome OS on ARM. Have I've been talking about that for like three, two three years. I mean, as soon as they launched Chrome OS, I was uh, looking for for Chrome on ARM because that's what really makes Chrome OS popular. Because as as long as it stays on Intel, it's too expensive. If if you had to make a Chromecast device on Intel, it would for first it would not be possible. You cannot make that small device with Intel inside, and it would be uh, hundred forty nine dollars. It would be bigger. It would be uh, you know nobody. Uh, it wouldn't like it wouldn't make sense at that price. People are gonna say, well, we want more than just streaming, you know. But with ARM, you can customize and you can say let's limit it for something easy. This is what they're doing. Yeah, yeah it's, definitely. A, it's definitely. a great new uh, time. And uh, hold on, so, you guys carry on. I'll be right back. Okay. So I've seen Nicholas. How are you, mate? Now listen, um, I would love to get you on my podcast, mate, to interview you. I've just, I've just checked out your blog, and um, I will love to interview you one day, mate. Cool. For free. Yeah, I'm. I'm always free. That's the that's the thing. On the internet, right. there's always time to do stuff. All right, well, I added you on Google+, Plus, so Jacob's going to send you some information. He's the producer of the podcast, so he'll send you some information cool. um, and you know, the, inf the time and stuff. So, Jacob, is that okay with you? Hey, Jacob, what's up? Jacob is... Uh... may have audio issues, but anyway, let's wrap this up now. And I'm sure Brad would love to have you on his uh, tech yeah, web guest, wouldn't you, Brad? Oh, definitely, mate. I'd love to have him on. I've seen his blog. I just mentioned him before. I'm going to get him on next week, maybe. Cool. It's an excellent podcast, but we're going to wrap it up now. And I uh, would like to do this again because I think that the uh, the, the new website, uh, ChromecastCast.com, is going to do a series of podcasts about the uh, Chromecast uh, product, and we'll, we're going to yeah. delve into it more. And today is day one. So we don't know a whole lot. We're going to know a whole lot more in a few days, and hey, maybe Paul, in a week or two we'll know a lot more than we know now. Go ahead, hey, Paul. Uh, Brad. So two questions. Now, you've got a Samsung S4 phone now. Yeah, I do. So you've moved from that. You moved from the iPhone to that phone? Uh, no, I still have the iPhone. It's still activated. Uh, I have two phones now. I have the old iPhone and the, and the new uh, Samsung Active, you know, which is oh, waterproof. Sorry. Yep. Yep, good and phone. Hopefully, I'll be seeing uh, Chromecast on both these devices. Yep. 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 Did you Chrome. order one? Did you order one, um, Paul? I ordered four of them. I got in there before they closed the uh, orders off today. Now, nice one. now it's closed off. Good one. Where did you order yours from? Amazon or from the? Directly. Place I couldn't get it on Amazon. Amazon didn't even know about it yet, so I oh. got it direct <laughs> off the uh, Google uh, store there. Uh, yeah, Jennifer Regigro, she ordered two, and she's she's going to have it by the end of this month. By yeah, the of around the 28th, I think, is when they're... Yeah, the 28th, 28th yes. 30th, somewhere in there. So we will have more of these uh, podcasts. I hope to to get you back, Nicholas, and it's been great meeting you, and I look forward to meeting, meeting up with you again, both on the on-air podcast and off the on-air podcast. Maybe we can, we can get together and cook up some startup ideas. Cool. Uh, yeah, I've seen you before on Google Plus. Is there yeah. any chance you would ship one to over to London? Uh, well, let's talk about that off. We the talk air. about let's it off the not, air. Okay. Let's not do business on the <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I do have another 38 another hours. website. I have another website I'm developing called pluspitch.com, and what we do there is somebody who has a great idea gets to meet an entrepreneur. And I mean, meet a venture capitalist or an angel investor, and and the result will be possibly be an investment right on an on-air podcast. So it's oh, like wow. a, a reality show for investors and uh, inventors to meet up.
possibly get funded, just like you would, say, on Indiegogo or on, uh, uh, you know, any of the other crowd sharing. That's, uh, that sounds funding, so. awesome. Imagine people sitting back in the sofa, like all the investors watching a live hangout through the, the, through the Chromecast on their TV, and then on the phone, you can decide how much you want to invest, how much stock you want to buy in the startup in real time. You can, like, have all the, in that's going to be awesome. That's what we're going to do, and we'll talk about that more in an up-and-coming uh, podcast. And, uh, and so the two sites to tune into are ChromecastCast.com, that's number one, which will be a series of podcasts about Chromecast, and the other one is the uh, pluspitch.com where the investors will meet up with the inventors and try to strike up deals. And maybe some we'll have a theme, one of the themes of that, we'll do a, we'll do a show just on uh, Chrome, Chromecast uh, developers and API and investors who are interested in investing in their products. So that's something to look forward to. And uh, look forward to meeting you all again. We're going to wrap it up today and uh, have a good day. And uh, I'm going to end the broadcast right now.